Hey guys, this is Wendy with Love and Stampin'. I'm here today to show you one of my mini processes that I do every month. I love um, process videos, things like meal prepping, cooking, uh, planning, organizing, pretty much anything you can do that is a system. So I thought maybe people would want to see the systems I have for my business. So I'm going to start sharing these types of videos. So here we go. So every month um, I have people who earn awards from me um, that are on my team. So for people that aren't familiar, I sell Stampin' Up! products. I have people under me that sell Stampin' Up! products. I know it's direct sales. People always give, you know, little comments about that. But I have to say it's been really rewarding in my life. And I like to think the same for my team members. So anyway... The first thing I do is I create all these fun graphics and I share them in my team Facebook group and announce the achievements of everybody. Um, and then I have these cool little slips written up that to, are to tell people what the heck they're getting a prize in the mail for. And um, I was just, oh, there's Truvy, nine nights. Um, so I was just doing all of this and I thought you know I should show the process so um thousand dollar club earners get a pretty nice gift from me at least I think so so this month they're going to get embossing folders so some of them are going to get the snowflake embossing folders some of them will get these new mini boss embossing folders and then people you see here that are stacked with another embellishment those are the top five in sales for the month so uh, they get these. And then down here, we have people who hit bronze elite status. And that just basically means that you have sold or purchased $1,800 within um, a year's time. And they get one of these engraved bone folders. So um, that's sitting there for them. And then I have people who have hit Qualified Recruit, which is $900 in sales. So they get something from this bin. So I have all of these bins labeled with what my gifts are. And then the items inside are according to amount. So this one's up to $7. This one is $8 to $10. And then it spells out what it would be for. Um, so my qualified recruits, I think this month I'm going to give them, there's six of them. So I'm going to give them one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to give them, uh, these little basic pearls. I try to always give consumable products as much as possible because then if they already have something and it's consumable, then they're able to easily, uh, reuse it. So there's those. And then... Let's go back over here. So now I have to go look at who achieved. Oh, that's the wrong thing. That's my little printable. So I go to my team stuff. Let me pull it up. And I had one silver achiever and she also, I thought she got something else, but I think that's um, Melinda Wilson. So Melinda Hart became a silver. So she gets something from this grouping. And I try to always give a pair of paper snips to my silvers and then maybe like something silver. So like these guys here, frosted clear epoxy droplets. So she'll get both of those for her achievement. And I need a place to set them. I'm running out of space. So I'm gonna set it up here on top of this mess. Okay. And then I have to find the correct little whatchamacallie. Whatchamacallies. I guess I don't have any printed. 
Okay, so that means I have to print some uh, silver slips, but these are for challenges I do on my team. These are for our big brown box challenge because I really want to have something fun for people to play along with, even if they're not making this a business. And so that's kind of what this is. It um, Basically, if you purchase any product, you get to post it in our Facebook group and then they get to play along and I choose several winners every month. So that's what that is. And then this is for my club. So each month uh, I mail this out with my club. This has nothing to do with my team. And when you fill those all up, you get $25 in product. So I have these in here also. These... This is just a little, now we're turning this into a studio tour. What do you know? So this is for my club members. There's tins in here and then there's acorns in here. And so they're going to get these. So I got to separate all those out and bag them. Probably something sister will do. Uh, content planning I'm working on. I'm way behind. I've got my color splash tin stuff over there that I'm working on. And this is... I need to take a photo of this card to put on my blog. This is my paper party paper. So all of this has to be cut into six by six packs, sorted, labeled, and so does this. This all has to be sorted and labeled. And then I down here, I've got, that's a sneak peek actually. Don't look. Um, this is full of ribbon for my love and stamp and monthly people and these are um, gifts for my team members where do, we did a fun challenge and so um, next Tuesday I'll be picking a winner for those I think that's everything at the moment I have so many packets of envelopes that I had to put them up here on the tabletop because they wouldn't fit in my envelope drawer yeah. Oh, and I have all of my daughter's birthday presents up there. I went kind of crazy this year. There's some more here <laughs> because she doesn't, she's missed out on a lot this year and she doesn't get to I hope you guys are in the mood for some fun craftiness. So I have a couple of things before we get started. Okay. So Tonight's creative rally prizes. Um, these are prize patrol giveaways that I will be sharing at the end of my video. And you will have to do something to get entered into the prize. Um, but I wanted to show them to you really quick. So the first one is the Summer Days stamp set and the little details embossing folders. So this is one prize. And the second prize is the Gnome for the Holidays stamp set and the Winter Snow embossing folder. This is the second prize. So I'll be posting after this video the ways you can enter to win these, okay? So make sure you check our group for that. Um, other housekeeping things are... Um, I will be posting all the awards and recognition after my video so you'll stay tuned for that and please go in and take the time to congratulate people if you have time to do that everybody always appreciates that um and i think we're not even going to really talk anything businessy tonight we're just going to have fun doing some crafting although i have a few little business tips for you as i go through hi roxanne hi mary hello hello um, the other last housekeeping thing is I have not had the opportunity yet to remove people from this group that are no longer active demonstrators, but that will be happening in the next 24 hours. So you have two choices. You can either repurchase the starter kit so that you stay on our team or you will be removed. Sadly, I hate it every single month. I hate or I should say quarter. I hate having to remove people from our group. It like pains me, but it has to be done because sometimes we share confidential stuff in here that only demonstrators are allowed to know about. And so I have to make sure the environment is 
conducive to just stamping up demonstrators. So if you have gone inactive and you're watching this and you want to rejoin, I would re recommend doing it within the next 24 hours and then you won't get removed from our group. Okay, so um, tonight I am featuring the ornamental envelopes or envelopes, depending on how you say it, and the dies. So the dies, let's, let's talk about the stamp set first. So there's these really cute ornaments and they're all one stamp. And then there's all these different little elements to decorate your envelopes and then your lines, okay? And then you have different size decorative pieces to cut your envelopes. So these cut the edges. There's a little three by three one for little ones. And then these cut out stuff in the center. So I'm going to show you this stuff because this was a set that I was like, I'm not sure about that until I bought it and then started playing with it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I have this. So I thought maybe some of you might feel the same way. So this is a great all around set to have and to keep forever because it really um, allows you to decorate your envelopes up nicely. So I'm going to get these out of the way real quick. Hold, please. I don't want to lose any dies. And I'm just going to go through and show you. So here's this one, for example. It cut this. So I would not just seal this and send it like this. I would put a backing in here. And that looks like this. So when you cut a backing, um, it cuts the nice shape out for you. It's a little scalloped edge. And then I personally just use a little smidge of glue doesn't have to be a lot and you take this tuck it down in here glue it down and you're done and then all you have to do is kind of push and crease okay and then you have an envelope that opens up and has this awesome liner isn't that fun Okay, so there's that one. That one has nothing decorative on it at all. This one, I've die cut this piece in, and then you could use red or green in here, and this would make a beautiful Christmas card envelope. I die cut the edge of this, which is using this die right here. And you can see here it's scalloped. I hope you can see that. So that's another fun one. And then there's this fun design that cuts through and again gives you that peekaboo window. And then there's this one, which I have already lined with Rich Razzleberry Designer Series paper and I stamped the front. So now I have guidelines for writing my address. Okay, so I'm gonna make an envelope, to, I mean a card to go with this. And I'm using a piece of old funky cardboard that I just kind of have and I haven't used this yet but we're going to use it now. I also used the Forever Greenery, um, I think that's what it's called, embossing folder on the bottom of this piece, Whisper White piece of cardstock. So I'm going to open it up and I'm going to take painter's tape. This is just blue painter tape that you would use in your house if you were painting. And I'm going to put this on my arm and pull it off a couple of times because that makes it so that it's not going to mess up my cardstock because it puts my oil on the tape, which is kind of gross, but it prevents problems. So I don't know if you can see the embossed, here you can. All that embossing is really pretty. So now I'm gonna take my colors that I picked out. So we've got Rich Razzleberry, and I've already squeezed the lid to the base. So I'm squeezing together like this, opening it up, and now I have ink in here. I have my aqua brush. I think that's what these are called. <laughs> I don't really know. And I'm squeezing water into the tip of it. 
Come on, water. This is the first time I'm using this one. So it's taking it a minute. There we go. So once you see water start dripping, you know you have enough water, okay? We want really loose water here. And then I'm gonna take and just start to splatter, okay? And then I gotta clean my aqua brush. So what I wanna do is squeeze water. I'm doing it off film, but let me get a paper towel and then I can do it on camera for you so you can see what I'm talking about. So I'm taking and squeezing water down and wiping. And essentially what I wanna do is I wanna wipe this until it's clear. That way I know I'm not mixing ink colors, okay? Then we're gonna take Granny Apple Green. So we've used Rich Razzleberry and now we're using Granny Apple Green. And same thing. You probably aren't seeing this really good on your end, but you you will see it better when I'm all finished. Now I'm using crushed curry. Same thing. Squeeze. Not enough. Squeezing again. That's better. It is hard to get ink on the lids of the new pads. Yeah, it is harder. I would agree. <laughs> but it's still possible. Okay. So my yellow's not showing up quite as much, but that's okay. I don't really need it to. It's there. And then I'm going to take pumpkin pie. Drip that water in. And again, splattering ink. So now I've got Rich Razzleberry, gar uh, Granny Apple Green, Crushed Curry, and Pumpkin Pie. I'm gonna put my lid back on my pen here in the background of this card. And so I pull away very gently so I don't rip my paper. And you can see I even got some on the back of the card. That's okay. So here's what the front looks like. Isn't that beautiful? All of these. So Sandra is saying use a clear block, stamp the clear block into the ink and get it your ink there. That is a that is an option. Um totally an option. I just it's one less thing for me to clean up. I don't have um, any sort of a sink or anything here. So for me, this works, but that is absolutely an option. Okay, so now I have this part done. I want to stamp my sentiment, have a beautiful day. So I'm gonna use Rich Razzleberry cardstock. and my sentiment. And you guys are gonna be surprised you're gonna see this on my blog because here's a little sneak peek for my team, only for my team. These colors that I've used tonight are my next color splash. So a great way to make sure your stamp is straight, a stamp like this, cause see I could bend it very easily and gets all wonky is just use a grid. So I'm using this blue grid line and lining it up there to make sure my sentiment is straight. Okay, so there we have that. Mm 
I'm trying to do this with the camera above me. It's hard. Okay. I'm reading comments now. Okay. So then we're going to take Versamark ink. We've already stamped it. And now, oh, it's not as dark as I want it. Okay, so now I have to heat set this and it's gonna be noisy for a second, but I think I can talk over it. So let's, give me just a second here. All right. So I'm just gonna heat set this with Whisper White. Or I'm trying to. It's hard to do it because my cord doesn't reach to you guys. So I can't really do it on camera. that and then go this way and chomp it again and now we have our little sentiment and now I just need to do a little die cut of some sort so I think what I'm going to do hold tight hold tight I know I want an intricate die, so we're gonna use this one. We're gonna move everything out of the way here. Cause I'm gonna use the new machine. Ah! All right, I'm gonna set it here. And let me get a piece of white cardstock. There it is. I actually had this whole card planned out, but I'm adding stuff that I didn't plan on adding now. So there's that. All right, so we're gonna roll this through. Try not to shake my countertop too much. That did not cut all the way. So I'm gonna turn it the other way. So here's a great tip for you. If you have trouble getting stuff to cut, yep, see now it's completely cut through. So the first time I ran it through, I ran it through this way and it didn't cut everywhere. Then I turned it this way and ran it through. I cannot explain to you the physics of that, the science behind it, but it's a thing and I don't know why. <laughs> Some dyes only want to go through vertically and other dyes only want to go through horizontally. So um, now we get to sit and poke this out so we don't tear it. Um, I could use the dye brush, but why not just hang out with you guys for a minute and do this? Uh, yeah, so I don't know what the physics are behind that. There's something about certain dyes. They like being cut certain ways and they work perfectly when you cut them that way. And then there's other dyes. It doesn't matter. You could cut it any old way and it's going to come out fine no matter what. So yeah, I don't know the answer. I just know it's a thing. It is a thing. Oh, I already tore. See? This is what happens. So if you're like thinking right now, oh my gosh, I thought the only, I was the only one that had a hard time getting these dyes out. No, you're not. You're not. 
there's certain dyes that are just fussier to work with than others. And there's lots of tips and tricks. Like you could run a dryer sheet through and then run your dye through and it will make it cut much nicer. You can run wax paper through and then run your die cut through and it apparently just makes it fall right out. Um, I'm just too lazy to try all that stuff and I'd rather sit and just poke them out like this. So there's that. What is the deal with this one right here? There's always one. There's always one in every crowd. Okay, I tore a few off, but whatever. I'm trying to hurry. So I have a couple scragglers here, so I'm just gonna clean them up with my scissors. Nobody will ever know the difference. And that's what I do with stuff like this. It's not perfect, it's handmade. Okay. It's not Hallmark, it's handmade, right? So here we go. You know I love cards with lots and lots of white space. So this style of card would not be for everybody. I understand that, so I feel like I should say that right up front. Um, but it's my style, it's what I like. So it's what I'm doing. So I'm gonna pop this up. I like my cards to be simple, um, lots of white space, and a little bit artsy fartsy. Nothing crazy and extreme, but just a little bit. So this is just white on white, which I'm, which I love, which I'm saying again, I know that's not everybody's jam. And then this will go right here. And these are the kinds of cards that just make my heart happy. I just love them. And they're easy. You could make a bunch of these fairly quickly, but they use die cutting. They use embossing, a little bit of an artsy technique, heat embossing. I mean, I used a lot of elements on this card, but it's just very simple. Simple and pretty. We do want to get this centered. There you go. All done. Have a beautiful day. And then when you look up close, of course, you can see all the detail. So another way you could add extra detail to this card is you could cut a four by five and a quarter sheet and then emboss it and it would just give it one more layer. But it's really beautiful and simple and elegant and gets the message across, right? And it's got that kind of little bit of a fall feel. And you could even run a strip of colored cardstock underneath here if you wanted to break it up from this white layer. I personally don't. Um, but that's something that you could do and it would be perfectly fine. So you guys will see this card next week on my, at least on my social media, because my color splash theme are these colors for this coming Friday. So you're getting like a four day ahead sneak peek here of what my next color splash combo will be. So you'll have to check check back with me so that you can see oh and then I almost forgot we have the matching envelope right so this card goes with this envelope if I can get it in there and now it's like set and ready to go and I could do some splatters on the envelope too if I wanted to. I probably won't, but I could. And then I'll just paper clip these together. And that way when I go to use this card, I'll have this envelope ready to go too. Fun. Thanks for hanging out with me. Okay, I'm going to let you guys go. 
and I'm gonna hop on and post the Creative Rally prize patrols. And then after that, I am going to post the awards and recognition. So um, I'll catch you next time. Talk to you later.